Are you missing out if you're not getting a student loan? We're going to be talking about the pros and cons of getting the student loans in this new era of student loan debt forgiveness, both for parents and for students. Hi, I'm Bridget Sullivan Mermel, and I've got a family financial planning practice in Chicago, Illinois. And I'm John Shear. I have a family financial planning practice in Middleton, Wisconsin. And we're really lucky today to have as our guest, Patty Hughes, who runs a fee-only financial planning practice in Chicago, Illinois. Welcome to the show, Patty. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Great. Hey, this is so exciting. You know, we've, we've done some, we've had you on as talking about the student loan programs here in the past. We're really excited to get into like the next level on these things. And before we get started on the conversation, though, I want to remind all of our viewers to hit that subscribe button. That helps other people find this great information online. So hit subscribe and then let, let's get into this. I, I'm really interested in this topic that Bridget brought up about, you know, the idea of, hey, uh, there's some loan forgiveness that's out there, right? There's new things. And geez, if I'm planning to pay for college, you know, for myself, for my kids, or if I did, am I missing out on not doing it? Why don't I go out and get loans and get some of this free money? I, I hear that in conversations with friends and clients, and it's not quite as simple as that, right, Patty? Right. I think um, I, I've been hearing the exact same thing, and it's been in the news, and everybody's saying, let's jump on the bandwagon, take out student loans, you know, think with the thoughts that they're going to be forgiven, because so much has been mm -hmm. announced in like the last year, all these different waivers and forgiveness programs. But um, one of the things I think a lot of people aren't aware of that for undergrad, for example, it, you know, the majority of people take out, they call them unsubsidized loans. And these loans, you start accruing interest from the time you receive the disbursement. So um, let's just say you're a freshman undergrad and day one, you receive you know, a student loan. Um, well, that continues to accumulate interest the whole four years that you're in college. And then say you go to grad school after that, it continues to accrue interest. So um, one of the things people don't realize is then you, know, you get out of school and the loan balance is much higher than what you originally thought it was going to be. Um, because most people don't pay the interest while they're in school. So um, that would be one reason I would say is that the loan balance could end up, you know, being quite high. But but then I get it all forgiven. That's the devil's advocate, right? It all goes away, right? Or no? Uh, well, that's the thing. I think right now, I think just with these latest things that were announced, you know, people are thinking that that's going to be the case going forward. But a lot of these are limited. So, um, you know, they're like, for example, right now, the um, the last one that was announced, they're saying, well, that one is only, the, you know, the $10,000 and the $20,000 loan forgiveness. That one is only for loans that were taken out prior to July 1st of this year. So that does not include anything after the fact. So that's why I tell people don't count on that. They, they were very specific in saying, it's only for loans prior to July 1st. So there's no guarantee that they're going to, you know, come out with another um, revision to this and allow forgiveness for future loans. This only impacts prior loans. That, that's such a great point. It's interesting, you know, being in our business, of course, we all pay attention. I pay attention. I go, oh, that's right. I kind of forgot that. Nope, it's not this new thing, right? It seemed like this panacea sort of like, hey, here's this great thing. And yeah, not so much. And I know one of the things, Bridget, you talk about all the time is the idea of debt drag and just the idea of, hey, this might be advantageous, but what's the cost on the other side, right? Yeah. I mean, debt drag is a uh, studied um, phenomenon is people feel worse when they have certain types of debt and student loans are high among that type. We might think student loans, students shouldn't feel bad when they have student loans, that, that student loans, they should just take them in stride like people take mortgages in stride, but people do not. There's a lot of emotional baggage around student loans. And we were talking before the show about it and in all kinds of different ways, people feel bad about student loans and it, they let them stop student loans from, or student loans do stop them from doing other things meaningful that are meaningful. For instance, I know one person who's like, I don't want to retire until I pay off my student loan. Now, the state, they had a small student loan, payments were high, uh, but it was like stopping them. They, they had plenty of money to pay it off, but they didn't, you know, they didn't want to pay it off early or, you know, anyway, that's another story. But I'm just saying that there's an emotional part of student loans that people, it, it's like, 
people feel like it's this weight on their back, a monkey on their back that 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 it's uh, that it's difficult. So, and, it, and, and I it just seems don't, I don't me. think that's like to be taken lightly. Yeah, yeah, that's such a great point. And that's one of the things I love about our show here is just I'm I'm such a linear thinker. Like, well, here, do the math on these things, right? And you know, uh, a colleague of ours, all three of us are members of the Alliance of Comprehensive Planners, and uh, and one of our colleagues talks about uh, you know spreadsheets don't have to sleep at night, right? Mm -hmm. It might be the exact right thing to do, but the, you know, there's other things that come into these things, right? And you know, one of the things that that strikes me as part of this conversation is that. Uh, is that even the plans that we make, right? Life changes more than it stays the same. So you think, oh, here's how this is going to go. And Patty, you just said, well, geez, don't plan on that being the way in the future. And I know you, you shared a story about how s somebody has life had changed and uh, and they decided that they had to you know, leave their job and what they, they couldn't buy a house or do things because of their student loan debt, right, Patty? Right. Yeah. I knew somebody that, um, you know, she was an attorney and then um, she lost her job and ended up, she was in Florida. This was all during COVID um, and ended up coming back to the Chicago area. And she had over $280,000 worth of student loans. Um, and she ended up moving back home in her parents' basement and she was just distraught. I mean, you know, just saying, this is just so heavy on my mind, even though she could be on an income driven repayment plan, um, you know, and her salary, she was making like $90,000. So, you know, the payments wouldn't be astronomical if she was on an income driven repayment plan, but it was more the emotional thing. She was saying, I just feel like I can't move forward. I don't feel like I should be buying like a condo. Um, I just want to get this debt gone. And I think I don't know. In my mind, it's a different mindset that if you take a loan out for a home, you're looking at that as an investment and you're enjoying it. Um, where when you take the money out for a student loan, you know, you just see that big loan balance out there. And it's, um, you know, people just, they just don't like it. So I think it is like an well, emotional thing more than a, actually looking at the numbers. And also like going to school and getting your degree is actually hard. Right. So it's like, it's not even in, it's like an accomplishment to graduate or maybe you didn't graduate, whatever, but it's like, right. it's a hard thing. So yeah. it's not like, um, again, that you enjoy. Um, so sometimes what about parents? Let's talk about parents taking out parents' student loans. Uh, what are the things that people, again, parents' student loans are now being forgiven. Great. Why not take them? What do you think? Well, here, here's the thing. Um, the parent plus loans um, are, you know, this was the latest thing, you know, the $10,000 and the $20,000 loan forgiveness was, they're saying parent plus loans are going to be included in that. But all of these other revisions that they've made, for example, like the PSLF waiver, the public service loan forgiveness waiver, parent plus loans aren't included in that. Um, and so the other thing with these parent plus loans is they're only eligible for one income driven repayment plan if you consolidate the loan. Um, and it's called the income contingent re repayment plan. It's the least favorable of any repayment plans. Um, so uh, it, it's just, you know, people kind of, you know, don't want to do this for that reason. When they look at it, how much they're going to have to repay, it's a higher percentage of income as opposed to what these other ones are. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. And the other thing with the parent plus loans is that typically, you know, those come due just at the point where you're getting ready to retire. And that causes a real problem because then you're looking forward to your retirement and then you've got this big loan. And some, you know, for some people that I know, the loan could be like $150,000 and maybe they're in their late 50s and they're saying, okay, I'd really like to quit work now, you know, or in the next couple of years, but then I'm worried about this loan. Now the loan is coming due. Um, and I know somebody who had two kids and took out like 150,000 in loans and said, the kids told them, we'll pay you back. Once we graduate, you take the loan out, but we'll pay you back. Well, then one of the kids makes like 30,000. The other one's doing an hourly job, making like 15 an hour and they can't pay them back. And then, you know, they then the parents were saying, well, go to a private lender and try to refinance it just to get it out of our name because we don't want to pay it. Well, the lender said, I'm not going to lend the money to them because look at, they don't make enough income. They don't have, you know, enough credit history. So then you're really stuck. There's no way of getting out of it. So it's, you know, those can be really just a bad idea. And I think 
people say, well, my income's going to drop and the, you know, I'll be retired, but they don't realize that they're looking at your adjusted gross income. So anything that goes into your adjusted gross income, for example, when you take out um, required minimum distributions, now that's required at age 72 from your 401k or your retirement plan, all that gets dumped into adjusted gross income and the payment goes up. And who wants the payment to go up when you're 72 years old? So um, I just think people don't understand it. So, uh, you know, my uh, takeaway here is that the, uh, like student loans are a long-term commitment and the commitment is actually to pay them back. And that currently there's some ways to get around it mm -hmm. uh, that maybe you won't, but that banking on it is, bank there's so many uncertainties that come up in life that banking on paying it back it, or not having to pay it back I, is just uh, a tough, you're setting yourself up for the possibility of a lot of disappointment. Right. And I think a lot of people don't realize that the last thing that they announced, you know, the 10,000 and the 20,000 forgiveness, I think that they don't realize they think that it's going to be forever. Like any loans I take out going forward is going to be forever. And they specifically stated it was only for loans prior to July 1st of 2022. So there's no provision in there that going forward that this is going to be the case. So I think that's really an important thing that people have to realize. So um, I, it seems like this is a great place to wrap it up. Um, I just wanted to thank you for being a guest on our show, Patty. This has been so great to have you. Thank you. And I'm Bridget sullivan Mermel, and I've got a family financial planning practice in Chicago, Illinois. And I'm John Shear. I have a fee-only financial planning practice in Middleton, Wisconsin. Our guest today is Patty Hughes. And Patty, if people want to get in touch with you, how do they get in touch with you? Uh, the best way would be my website, Lake Life Wealth Advisory Group. And there's a contact form on there. And that's usually the easiest way uh, to get in contact with me. That's great. Lake Life Wealth Advisory Group. And uh, Patty, Bridget, and I are all members of the Alliance of Comprehensive Planners. Uh, if you like what you hear on our show and this way of holistic tax-focused thinking, visit acplanners.org to find an advisor in your area. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button, help other people find this show. Thanks, you guys. Thank you.